Thank you very much, Sister Ruth. Good morning. Right, uh, we are taking our theme for the month of October, a step forward, um, as you have seen also on uh, CNN, that we are developing our theme, Fear Not. Um, the first Sunday, Pastor Jean Beni read from Acts chapter 27, verses 14 to 15, and thereafter 21 to 22. And his theme was, On Your Way to Rome. He referred to Paul and his core sailors. They were sailing to Rome, and they experienced a shipwreck. They were afraid, but God helped them, and they reached Rome safely. Last Sunday, Dr. Kalonji read from Psalm 23, and the message was the blessings of the shepherd and antidote for fear. And this morning, we preach from Isaiah 43, verse 1 and verse 2. Today, you will be taught how to overcome your fears. Next Sunday, the last Sunday, Pastor Priscilla is reading from Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, and her theme is the words which were said by Adam and Eve to God that they are afraid. Now, in other words, this entire month, we are teaching and we are preaching how a believer can overcome their fears. President, former President Franklin Delano Roosevelt led the American people through two challenging times. The first one, the Great Depression, which started in 1929 and at 1939, incidentally, the Second World War started 1939. Many words, many quotes are ascribed to uh, Franklin Roosevelt, president, as he was encouraging the American people. I'm going to read only two of his quotes. The first one, he says, this great nation will, en will endure as it endured in the past or before. It will be revived and prosper again. So, first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Secondly, he says in the second quotation, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something is more important Important or greater than fear. Now, the gist of what the former president of the USA, Roosevelt, was telling the American people, talking about the Great Depression, talking about Germany and Japan, who were attacking the Allied forces at that time. President Roosevelt is actually saying the problem that we face is not external in nature. The problems that the Allied forces were facing, yes, Germany and Japan were just rending havoc. But he is saying the greatest enemy to be conquered is not external, but it is internal. We are facing, as Dr. Kalonji and Pastor Jean Benhi preached to us the last two Sundays, we are facing situations. We are facing fears around us. And we are taught this month that as a believer, you were not designed to live a life that is fearful. But the greatest enemy to be conquered, it's not external, it is internal. 
The greatest enemy to be conquered is fear. God has not designed us to live a life that is fearful. Let the enemy come. Let the enemy rise against us. Let challenges of life come against us. But the word of God encourages us that we should not fear. And we are going to conquer our fears as believers. The first thing I want to do before we dive into our message. I'm going to make a few sentences about these fear sentences. The first one is fear terminology. We read in the Bible, there are about 850 references where believers feared where believers experienced situations where they were anxious, where they were terrified as we do today. Now what we realize is that it's not only lack of a better word, ordinary believers, me and you, but we read in the Bible that the way prominent believers, prophets, kings, who were also afraid. We read in 1 Kings chapter 18, 17 and 18, the children of Israel are worshiping idols. And God sends the prophet Elijah to bring a message to the nation of Judah and the nation of Israel. And we read in chapter 18 that the idols which they worship were destroyed at the mountain of Camel. Not only their idols and their idolatry, but also the false prophets of Baal. About 450 of them were also exterminated. What do you do in that situation? You're a hero in that situation. You bask in the victory of bringing the children of God from idolatry. But the opposite was true. We read in verse 3 of chapter 19. Then he was afraid and rose and went for his life. Other versions are saying he ran for his life. What was he afraid of? He could face the 450 prophets of Baal. But he was afraid because of the words of intimidation from Ahab's wife Jezebel, she says, go and tell Elijah tomorrow at this time, I'm going to do to him what I did to the prophets of Baal. Elijah became afraid in spite of the fact that God used him mightily. He was afraid. So it's not only ordinary Christians who are afraid. But all of us, even prophets, we face this debilitating emotion that is called fear. But the good news is that for this month, each and every one of us will be taught. You will have the word of God preach to you that you are going to overcome the fears that you are facing. It is God's will. God 
did not wire us like that. Irrespective of what you are going through. Praise the name of the Lord. We are declaring. We are preaching. That those who are facing dreadful situations. Those who are facing terrifying situations. Those who are facing anxiety. And some of you have lost maybe the natural way of sleeping. We have words for you today. Fear not for the Lord is going to help you. Praise the name of the, the biology, the biology of fear. What is fear? Fear is an inherited biochemical human response. Fear weakens the heart. Fear robs you of peace and joy, robs you of the quality of life God has for you. It drains energy from your life. It paralyzes you and leaves you hopeless. Eventually, it takes over your thoughts and indeed your in entire life. When you fear, you're worried, you're tense, you're nervous, you're insecure, you're anxious, you have low self-esteem and you are stressed and the list goes further. Billy Graham says fear and anxiety is the natural result when our hopes are centered on anything or something other than God. In other words, we trust something. We trust somebody. We trust a mechanism and we trust them, not God. Dr. Charles Mayo says fear and worry affect the circulation of blood. In other words, fear, anxiety, they also impact our lives, the heart and the whole nervous system. I've never known a man who died from overwork, but many have died from doubt, fear and worry. An unknown author says fear and worry are like a rocking chair. They will give you something to do or think about, but they won't get you anywhere. You can be anxious. You can be worried worried you can fear but you that won't take you anywhere another unknown author says ulcers are caused not by what you eat but what is eating you we are going to pray at the end of the service something that is eating you we are going to rebuke it we are going to bind it we are going to bring it down in the name of Jesus Jesus. David is saying, he, he compares the biology of fear and how God has created him. In Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14, he says, you formed me. Some versions are saying, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. Now, this means that I and you are not the result of mass production. God has knitted us together, David says, in our mother's wombs. God knew about you before you were conceived, before you were born. He says in verse 14, I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now the word fearfully and wonderfully made, it actually means I am God in creating you. God skillfully. God intricately. God marvelously put you together. God has not created you to live a life of anxiety. You were 
you were created in his image, in his likeness. And Paul says in Ephesians 2 verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In spite, it is of the challenges that we face and the fears that we do face. God has created us, created us in such a way that each and every one of us, we are the work of art that God has created. What is the source of fear? Pastor Priscilla is going to preach about this next week. What is the origin of of fear. We have already read or referred to Genesis 3 verse 9 and 10. The first reference of fear in the Bible is in Genesis 3 verse 10. God created our ancestors Adam and Eve and put them in the garden of Eden. God used to come God used to fellowship with them. But we know what happened in chapter 3. Did God say that they should doubt the word of God? And they did what God commanded them not to do. And they felt that they were naked. Beyond physical nakedness, spiritually, they were naked. Is that not wonderful? Even when they felt like that, God did not abandon them. God came to them. And he said, where are you? In the Hebrew language, which the Old Testament was written, where are you? It's not a question. It is a declaration. It is a statement that you are not where I have placed you. Where are you? What did they say? We had you in the garden and we were afraid of you. I think the greatest source of anxiety, of fear is disconnect with God. To be where you are not supposed to be. To have relationship. To have fellowship with God greatly minimizes anxiety and fear. May God help us. May God help you to be where you are supposed to be. When you are having a connect with God. Incidences of fear, anxiety, and unbelief, and all those things will be greatly minimized. Another statement, oh, I think I should have learned from the first service that I shouldn't. Um, I said I'm just, I was going to make a few remarks on these fear statements. But they are wrong and faulty ways of dealing with fear. Some of us have been facing the same challenge many years. You have been facing this situation and it doesn't seem to be going away. Why? It's because you're trying to address it, but you're addressing it wrongly. Faulty ways of dealing with fear. I've given you a few of them there. To be numb. To be numb means you ignore. In other words, you, 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 you pretend as though you are not fearful. Masking up fears. You are putting a mask. You are, you, you, you are portraying a brave face. Minimizing our fears. In other words, you are saying, ah, oh, this thing is, no, it's not. It's not. It's going to develop into a monster, rationalizing and explaining fears away. You think, okay, yeah, it, will, it will not go away unless you face it. Paranoia. 
to, to just exaggerate our, fear, our fears. Your fears are, are greater. But I believe this month you will be taught as you have been taught how to approach and to confront your fears. Let's come to our message now. Three ways. Three ways to exterminate. Three ways to live a life without fear. Three ways to conquer this inside enemy called fear. The first one is that don't run away from your fears, but face your fears. Don't put your head in the sand and think your situation will disappear. It will not disappear unless you face it. The psalmist is saying to us in Psalm 55, verse 4 and 8. Now, verse 4 and verse 5, they give us an impression. The psalmist is fearful. My heart is severely pained within me. Verse 5, fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. Verse 6, so I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. You will not be at rest. You can develop wings. Wish you could develop wings and fly away from your fears. No, you will not address your fears by running away from them but to face to confront your fears to confront your situation we read about the situation here in numbers chapter 21 the children of israel sinned against god now god released snakes there were snakes to bite them and many of them died because they sinned and they were bitten by these snakes. And God says to Moses, after he cried to God, God, are you exterminating your people? Are you destroying your people? God says to Moses, you should make him a brazen serpent. And after making this brazen serpent, you should put it on a tree and whosoever looks at the serpent that is hung on the cross they shall be healed they will be well from their poison from the snake bites God takes uh, the image of the same snakes that beat them and he hangs them on their tree. Whosoever, whosoever looks at this brazen serpent, whosoever faces it was healed. In other words, whatever that you are suffering from, what Ever that has made you to be fearful, it is hung on the cross. Somebody shout the name of the Lord. You are facing your adversity. You are facing your enemy. You are facing your fear and your pain. The only difference is that it is on the cross when you look at it. Why? Because Jesus took away your fears on the cross face 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 you can't run away it's just an image that your trouble 2000 years ago was crucified on the cross of Jesus whatever thing that makes you face fearful was hung on the cross David, children of Israel are facing an enemy 
They are facing a mountain. They are facing a giant. They are facing Goliath. I preached a sermon in the past, battle before battle. Victory before battle. All the Israelites, including Saul, were afraid to face Goliath. But David, the shepherd, the psalmist, faced Goliath. He did not run away. He faced Goliath. We will not defeat our enemy by running away from our enemy. In fact, David, David warned the war even before he faced Goliath. He started to negotiate. <laughs> Dr. Tende, he negotiates the price <laughs> before the fighting. He says, what will be given to the man who is going to defeat this giant? David had to confront this giant called Goliath. He says to me, he says to him, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. David had to face your Goliath. Praise God. You are going to defeat him. We are going to defeat our Goliath. We can't run away. Jesus himself, Jesus had to face the terror of the cross. The cross was terrifying. And Jesus is in Gethsemane and he is praying that, Lord, let this cup pass away from me. Luke says his sweat were like the drops of blood. But he says, is let not my will be done, but let your will be done. Jesus had chances, options of not facing the cross. You remember Satan told him that he should bow to him. He will give him all the treasures, all the kingdoms of this world. And Satan wanted Jesus to be crowned before the cross. There is no crown before the cross. There is no crown before the pain. You must face your pain. You must face your cross. And you are going to defeat it. I want somebody to shout the name of the Lord. Because Jesus we we are who we are today from different nationalities from different places because of the man who did not dread who faced the cross we are here Zimbabweans, Zambians, Malawians Nigerians we are the church of Jesus Christ and he said I will build and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it because of a man who faced his terror because of a man who faced his cross. I'm not going to run away from my fears. I'm going to confront my cross. I'm going to confront my pain. Colossians 2 verse 15. In this way he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory. And the second way is that let us remember that fear is real. Challenges are real, but God is bigger than our challenges. God, the God we serve is mightier than our challenges and our fears. Isaiah 31 verse 1 Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses who trust in chariots because they are many. There are people who seek help but at the wrong place. Egypt here stands for military 
power. There were people, uh, including Judah, who were trusting uh, in uh, Egypt, uh, making alliances. Uh, but Isaiah says, woe to those uh, who are seeking help uh, where there will not be help. Uh, Psalm 56 verse 3, uh, whoever, whenever I am afraid, uh, I will trust in you. Uh, in other words, uh, whenever I am facing fear, uh, I will trust uh, in the Lord. Uh, some trust in chariots, uh, some in horses, uh, but we remember we will trust uh, the Lord. Um, in other words, um, there is a realization um, that God uh, is bigger than uh, our fears, um, than our challenges. Uh, the last point uh, before we conclude uh, in spite um, of your fears uh, let us move uh, praise the name of the Lord uh, hallelujah you have fears uh, you have doubts uh, irrespective in spite uh, of what you are going through take a move uh, take a step uh, of uh, faith um, in Matthew 14 um, and John 6 uh, we read about uh, the miracle of the multiplication um, of the bread and the fish um, after the multitudes were fed um, Jesus went to the mountain to pray uh, and he commanded his disciples uh, to to take a boat uh, and go to the other side uh, Jesus was praying at the mountain and the disciples were in the boat um, and where when they were in the middle um, of the Sea of Galilee, the ship experienced winds and storms. It was buffeted and they were afraid. Note this, note this. Jesus came to them walking on the sea, walking on the waves and the storms. It was what time? It was the fourth watch. The fourth watch is very much significant. The fourth watch. Jewish mystics believe that it was the time Pastor Simopie, you're a prayer warrior. They believe it is the time from three to five in the morning. They believe it is the time of visitation. It is the time when God visits the earth. Sometimes mysteriously God wakes you up at three in the morning. You don't understand what is taking place. Three in the morning. The fourth watch. It is a time of visitation. But also it is a time when demonic forces are operating are waking at that time. Praise the name of the Lord at the fourth watch when there were waves, when there were fears, failures in the boat. Jesus came and Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter, Peter says, the disciples said, it is, it is a ghost. It is a ghost. You know what? The people, the, the career fishermen who were fishing, go Galilee. They, they had this belief that there were hundreds, hundreds of boats which capsized and fell they are down the Sea of Galilee. Fishermen have died. And they believe that at the fourth watch, they believe that the ghosts of those people will come. Anyone who is found fishing at that time, they will be 
also exterminated. This is what they believe. But let me tell you, irrespective of what is happening between three and five demonic forces unleashed, there are prayer warriors who wake up, who seek the Lord, who are praying for you, who are praying for the church, and we will overcome. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come to you. Jesus said, come. They did not wait. They did not wait for the storm to cool down. They did not wait for the winds to stop. But Peter walked on water. Take a move. Take a step of faith. There are storms around you. Take a step of faith. The Lord is on your side. Let's stand up. These guys are saying, Pastor, it's time up. Let's stand on our feet. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor, what are you saying? Kalonji, what are you saying? Jean Beni, Pastor Priscilla, what are you saying? What we are saying today, this month, uh, is that. Uh, it is time to break loose from your fear. It's time to be free from your fears. It is time to take a move. What are you replacing that with? You are replacing it with the word of God. John 8 verse 32 says, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The word of God shall set you free. The word of God will free you. Sorry guys, I'm reading the last, the last text. Isaiah 43 verse 1 but now this is what the Lord says it's not what the preacher says but this is what your God says this is what your Savior says he who created you he who formed you do not fear for I have redeemed you I have summoned you by name in other words, we are like this. I don't know all of you by name, but God knows your name. God knows what you are going through. God knows your family struggles, what you are facing. God, God says, I've called you by name. Praise God, you are mine. You don't belong to anywhere, but you belong to God. The last verse. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fires, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Praise the name of the Lord. Why are we making these bold statements. It is because 2,000 years ago Jesus died for the same situation that you are facing on the cross. And today we plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of the cross upon your life and upon your situation. Let's close our eyes and we are praying. And we are saying, God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the cross. Thank you for Jesus. Calvary is not a mountain. It's not a hill. But it is the finished work that Jesus did. On the cross. That's all. That's where your all was crucified.